Live from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Covering Informatica World 2017. Brought to you by Informatica. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for Informatica World 2017. Exclusive Cube coverage of the event, Informatica World 2017. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Peter Burris, General Manager, Head of Wikibon Research at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Greg Hansen, Vice President of EMEA Cloud and DAS Data as a Service. Welcome back, good to see you again. Cube good alumni. Good to see you, yeah, you thank you very much. Back good for to be back. year two, we're our year three for coverage. Exactly. Um, so last year we had a great conversation. I think you laid out pretty much the the playbook, a lot's happened in the past year, Brexit happened, but <laughs> cloud in, in, in outside of North America is a tricky game because there's a lot of different countries, I've got the EU and, and other parts of the world there, but it's really a regional issue and you've seen a massive expansion of the cloud guys. We have Amazon uh, sponsorship here, Google now has Spanner globally. Um, what is the landscape like? Get, given Brexit, obviously that was a, a political thing, has, has ramifications, but also the regional expansion of the cloud players has been pretty significant over the yep. past year, yep. uh, with announcements coming, I can't even keep track of them all. How's that impacting your business? So, it is quite fragmented across EMEA. I mean, our, our region is EMEA and Latin America as well, and across, it's a huge geographical region. And across that geographical region, it's very different in different countries. So, the EU as a whole, there is, cloud is very hot in the EU at the moment. There's a large adoption. I think we've, we've passed that point of no return, past the tipping point, as you, as you should say. And every enterprise customer that I talk to is now it's not when they're going to, or if they're going to adopt cloud, it's when. And, and usually they're already on a journey that we can help them with. But then in some of the far-flung regions where the maturity of cloud is less so, where the presence of Amazon or Microsoft or even ourselves is, is limited, like Russia, for example, or the Middle East, there's not that same kind of infrastructure. So the desire and the demand for, for cloud in those regions is less. But the large majority of our geographical uh, region, it, cloud is a huge topic for every single customer. What's that the state to. of the art right now in your territory uh, with cloud? I mean, obviously, yeah, from Informatica perspective, you have a, a view, but also in cloud adoption, hybrid, clear, public cloud, there's use cases for that, a lot of on-premise on with hybrid. What are the, what's the key state of the art right now for Informatica and the cloud players? I think there's a fabulous opportunity for Informatica. It really is a hot topic. So, it, and, th and there's two ways that we can deal with that. I mean, there's the enterprise space, which Informatica's been you know, uh, ruling for 20 years now. But cloud gives us a huge opportunity to go into new market sectors as well that we've really not been in before. Mid-market opportunities, and you'll no doubt see a lot of the partners around the event here that we've got uh, that allow us to address customers that we simply weren't addressing before. We had an enterprise uh, Salesforce, and if you think about those mid-market organizations, they're the organizations that are really going to drive the cloud adoption as well. In 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 um, in countries like Italy and Germany, where you very quickly get down to small and medium-sized enterprises, cloud is huge in those in those organizations in the, in those countries. So there's a great opportunity for us to go after that mid-market sector as well as the enterprise. But increasingly, in the digital business, we were talking about this earlier in one of the other segments. In the digital business, you have greater distribution of data, greater distribution of function and almost inevitably, the ecosystem is going to be comprised of big enterprises, but also mid-market companies. They're going to have to work together. That's true. So it's not looking at the enterprise and the mid-market in isolation. Increasingly, the enterprise is going to be acknowledged as a way of extending your influence into a lot of different customers, or a lot of different domains, both through partnerships as well as through customers. Mm -hmm. How is Informatica going to faci facilitate that kind of a new approach to thinking about business as a network of resources. Well, one of the great things about the cloud infrastructure itself, if we roll back and think about 10 years ago when all our products were on-prem, it was very difficult for us to understand what our customers were doing with our products. We had to go and talk to them, um, speak to them on the phone, visit them to understand what their use cases were. Now in cloud, that world has changed. Because if you think about one of the things that Informatica is well known for, it's metadata. So operational metadata, technical metadata. We can actually see what our customers are doing with our products. We can understand the use cases. And that becomes a, a crowdsourcing in terms of how you can replicate, how you can industrialize, how you can reuse a lot of that type of integration, which is enabling us to create new wizards, new new accelerators, to, which are common across the marketplaces and use cases. So it's, it's really a phenomenal change over the last you know, two years, which has been brought on by that ramp up of cloud adoption that we've seen globally, to be perfectly frank. Okay, take a minute, Greg, to just talk about this DAS. 
I think of DAS, I think of like cellular distributed antenna systems. But I mean, <laughs> it's an acronym. It's, it's data as a service. Data as a service. Okay. But what does it really mean? I mean what, yeah, I think take a minute to just break that down. What does that mean to the customer? What's the product? What's the offering? Okay. Um, it's important, obviously data yeah. is the key and like, people want it as a service, so take a minute to just explain what that means and the impact. Yeah, it's important to understand what Informatica <laughs> means by data as a service, I think. And it, our data as a service product lines are, are pretty much concentrated and focused on increasing the, the quality of data. So high performance quality of data. If you think about you know, digital transformation as a topic which has been talked all around in, in yeah. rooms and corridors around this event here this week, um, fundamentally data is, is really the key foundation of that digital transformation. But I would say high quality data is key to the success of digital transformation. So, and that's what our DAS products can enable us to do. So, if you think about looking How at How does a customer engage with DAS, digital data service? So, so, the typical use case is that you could have address verifications, and we have products that support multiple different countries and regions, more than 240 countries. So if you want to get high quality data about customers, which everyone is, uh, you know, ultimately wanting to do these days to effectively cross-sell and upsell, we can provide a global uh, facility to do that. Uh, but you can fix you can fix data in batch orientation. But but what's much more effective is actually plugging it into the applications, so it becomes seamless to an end user. So they're using Salesforce.com, or they're using a, a another application, and it's embedded into the application. So it runs in the background. When they enter a poor address, for example, it will correct it. When they and it will validate email addresses and phone verifications. We've got a customer in Germany, just as an example, one on one, which is a, an internet service provider in in Germany. They've got 7.7 .7 million customers, and one of their biggest problems was inaccuracy of data, and that prevented them billing. You know, it prevented them onboarding the customer first and foremost. And then it prevented them billing, which is a pretty serious problem for an organization. Yeah, I'm moving to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so by implementing the DAS products, what they allow, it enabled them to do is make sure that when they entered data into a system, that it was high quality, it was correct at the point of entry. Which by the way is seven times cheaper to do it there rather than try and fix it downstream. So it's an important product set for us to support high quality data for that digital transformation journey. Well, so, so you're, you're so you're sorry, John, you're not buying and selling your customers' data. What you're no. using is this is a service to enhance the quality exactly. of your data. Yeah. Got it will it. fix data and it will also enrich data that they've already well, got. That's an important distinction, John, because right a lot on. of people talk about data as a service. They say, oh yeah, data I'm gonna, cloud. I'm gonna monetize <laughs> my data by giving it to the marketplace. And we all know that you could put a good data, you give that data to a good data scientist, they're going to re-engineer your customer list pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what people worry about, the privacy. So back down to the drive and drivers for your business. What are the drivers for your business in, uh, in EMEA? Yeah, certainly cloud adoption, which we've already talked about, is a huge uh, growth market for us in EMEA. But there's other things that are happening locally in the EMEA marketplace, GDPR, general data protection regulations that are coming up. That is a hot topic on, on the lips of all our customers right now. And, uh, and let me take a minute to describe what that means for, for people who maybe don't, are not familiar with it, because it's generally an EU thing, but mm -hmm. it affects every organization that wants to sell into the EU. And it came on the back of the Google right to be forgotten ruling, uh, mm -hmm. where really what we've got to do is we've got to provide a framework where a customer can say to a, an organization, I want you to forget me. And obviously then need a central library, we've been able to manage it from a single point. That is an extremely complex thing for an organization to do, it's particularly an enterprise organization. It's forensics is what it is. Exactly. Yeah. And if you think about how to approach that, I think Informatica is in a unique position to help organizations deal with that type of issue. Because I know one of the announcements today, I think Ronan, my, who was on before me, at the, was talking about Claire, uh, our clairvoyancy and our artificial intelligence, but it's all about that unification of metadata. That's a, and there's a great example of how that, a, a good use case of where that can be deployed. Because if you think of the fragmentation of data that we've got across many clouds on premise, how do you understand even where all your customer data is? And that's what the unified metadata can provide. It can go out, collect all the metadata from all these different vendors, index it, yeah. catalog it for you. We've been in business 20 years. We yeah. know what customer data looks like. We know what product data looks like. We can categorize it and index it for you. Yeah. And then you can search it. So you can identify where your risk is, where your customer data is that's at risk. You can do something about it. And now with the most recent acquisition that we made last year in terms of Diaku, which was a missing piece for me in terms of how do we expose that to yeah. business users to actually engage in the governance process, the new Diaku acquisition of Axon um, 
really fills that gap for us. And, and I think we've got a really good stack to help. So you got product chops. We've talked about them in the past. The brand is new brand is out there. You're seeing some yeah, branding, great. brand Perfect. value. Good yes. for the partners, good for business. Um, so with that, I'll ask you my final question, which is what's different from last year? A lot has changed in 12 months. Just in a short 12 months, certainly on the product side, we saw some awesomeness from the products. Always, always had good product folks at Informatica World, yeah. which is why I love doing this conference. But the brand challenges were there. What is Informatica? So what's different now from last year? The big, the big highlights. Really, I mean, for me personally, and I've been here at Informatica quite a long time, I think it's quite refreshing. We had quite a lot of change in terms of our sea level in Informatica. That's really breathed new life into the organization my, from my own personal perspective. There's a huge refocus and a drive on our you know, fantastic new product sets that we're releasing here today. And you know, internally in the organization, there is a, uh, there's a, a big motivation, there is a, a new kind of uh, culture, a new, a new um, resur resurgence almost in terms of where we feel we're going to be in the next five years. Because we're looking at the, the product uh, portfolio, we're looking at the, uh, you know, the outlook in terms of our growth and our strategy, and it's a great place to be right now. And you know, sales is always helps when you get good sales <laughs> and everything, and I'm sure you, you've seen the, the figures, et cetera, that we've been doing, but you know, I yeah. can't see that changing. I, think and the market I was just looking at Amazon's um, stock yeah. price and sales and net income over the past year, and really the inflection point was you know, right at 08, end of 08, being at 09, but really the, the, the real kick up on the hockey stick, which they have, has been around 2010, halfway through yeah. 2010, and then it's just pretty much straight up, massive shift, this is a wave, cloud is here. Yeah, and I think, you know, Sally Jenkins, our CMO earlier on this morning, I think she put it exactly right. You know, Informatica, in my, in my view, we've been a little bit too conservative in terms of shouting about how good we are. And I think we're pretty much one of the hottest type pre-IPO companies that are out there right now. So if you look at our product set, the leader in six market segments, you know, yeah. that's a great place to be. Yeah. So I'm excited about the And future. going it's private, we've talked to Neil, I've talked to all the top executives. It's just a great, you know, close the curtain, open the doors yeah. back up again when you're ready. Yeah. Easy to retool, certainly as a private company. No pressure on the 90 day shot yeah. clock. Jerry Held, board member, was talking about how, how that makes things go really smooth. That's right, yeah, and, and I mean, imagine trying to make that journey towards subscription when you're a quarterly uh, yeah. you know, based organization. It's helped with the product yeah. development, it's helped with the commercial modeling as well, yeah. though, and it's, it's an exciting place to be right now. So it's good for management to be focused on not the, that window of every 90 days, yeah. which really is 60 days, because you got 30 days <laughs> to prep for the earnings call, but focusing on real product innovation. Michael Dell did it at Dell yeah. Technologies, yeah. now EMC. A lot of great stuff. Greg, thanks for coming back on theCUBE and sharing your hey, insights. It's great to be here. Thank and you. Uh, when we're in EMEA, we're going to come by and say hello. Absolutely. And certainly we'll keep in touch as we expand theCUBE out to uh, in Europe. Look forward to thanks it. Thanks so much. It's theCUBE, live coverage. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, with Peter Burris with Wikibon. We'll be back with more live coverage here in San Francisco at Informatica 2017. After the short break, stay with us.